Today the VCR is so outdated it probably seems as primitive as a rotary phone or a typewriter. But just as the rotary phone and the typewriter are pretty important things, the VCR also, I think, holds a really important place in the history of stuff. Today on the channel, I want to pay homage to a tool that was formative in my youth, formative to my career, and I think formative to my society. I don't think we'd be where we are now if this tool wasn't invented. I'm not suggesting we shouldn't leave VHS in the past, but I am suggesting we shouldn't forget the importance it had in forming media consumption in everybody's life today. So that's what I'm going to talk about. If you're willing to listen, stay with me till the end. For now, let's get going. In 1985, only 14% of American households had a VCR. By 1990, five years later, 66% of families owned at least one. That's an incredible increase. That's over 400% in five years. Two thirds of American households had one of these, and there was a good reason for that. Prior to the birth of the VCR, if you wanted to watch something on TV, it was a live event. Literally. It was stressful for the people watching, it was stressful for the people making it. Trust me, I work in the film and television industry, and I know what it is to make live TV. It's not easy. It was also hard to watch. You had to be at home, you had to be in front of your television set, and you had to be watching. Someone comes to the door, someone rings you up on the phone, and you're gonna miss a part. Maybe the best part. That's a super inefficient way to watch television. Imagine how different it felt for people to wake up one day and know they could go to a store and buy a device that would allow them not only to record films and television when a programmer had it on so that they could watch it later at a time that worked better for them, but also they could go to the store and buy a copy, a really good looking copy of any film they wanted. They could keep that film and they could watch it again and again and again, any part or the whole thing. This was a really big change. It changed everything about how people watched film and television. It created a much more intimate connection with the content watched, and it let people get really, really, really connected to the films and television that they were watching. And it let them do it affordably in their own home. There were lots of drawbacks, I'm not saying there weren't, but life before the VCR was really different than life after the VCR. You could fully appreciate and absorb any film or television show you wanted. You could record the big game and play back some play that would stick with you forever. You could show your friends and say, hey, did you see this? Prior to the VCR, that wasn't something anybody could do. And as you know, I'm a big fan of physical media. I love owning records. I love owning CDs. I love owning video games. It breaks my heart to think that there's something that I might think is important, something that I might really want to watch or show to someone else, but I can't because a major streamer like Netflix has taken it down. When you don't own the media that you love, sometimes it's really hard to connect to. The VCR was the first time people could do that, the first time that people could own a movie or a television show and watch it whenever they want it. I think that breeds a different kind of love. <laughs> And I really, really like that kind of love. So for me, the VCR is a really important tool. So by 1997, the DVD was invented and the VHS tape was sort of passe. It took 20 years though for them to stop making VCRs because people just wouldn't stop watching. Why is that? Well, that's open to debate, but here are a couple of reasons. You pull a tape out of a VCR, that tape is going to remember where you were. <laughs> It's not gonna remember where you were for four hours or six hours or a day. It'll remember indefinitely. Sometimes the greatest thing about popping a VHS tape back into a VCR is remembering, oh yeah, <laughs> I love this part. And that's why the tape's still here. It doesn't need the internet. It doesn't need monthly subscriptions. I know the quality might not be there. I know it's a square image instead of a rectangular one. And that's not the greatest. So I'm not saying we should go back to the world of VHS. I'm not saying you should rush out and buy a VHS VCR. Trust me, I tried. I, I did that earlier this year on this channel. Found one at a thrift store. I fixed it up. I watched an old horror movie and it was really fun, but I can see how it's not for everyone. There are titles that you can only see on VHS. They didn't make the jump to DVD. They're not anywhere on the internet. If you want to find those obscure titles, VHS is in some cases your only hope. But for most people, watching a movie on a VHS tape might not be the thing that does it for you. That doesn't mean this year on Black Friday, we all can't take a moment and pause amidst the hustle and bustle of internet purchases to stop and think all the technology that we're working with today in some way was affected by the changes the VCR brought to media consumption worldwide. So even if you don't plan on buying a VCR and going back in time, I think it's worth remembering. So with that, I'll say goodbye for this week. Thank you so much for staying with me till the end. I really appreciate that. 
If you could remember to like or subscribe, that would really help this channel out, and I'd also appreciate that. Until next week, take care, stay safe, have fun with your DIY projects, and I'll see you next Saturday.